Hello and welcome to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, where today I want to talk about how every kid should get a trophy. So the big question is this, how are parents like us, who don't have a manual, who are doing the best we can, who feel as though we aren't enough, how are we going to raise healthy, happy children who we are proud of and still keep our sanity in that process? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Ryan Roy, and welcome to I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, a podcast for parents who are being real with themselves. Hello, and welcome back to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, where today I want to talk about how I think every kid should get a trophy. Like, we live in a world where... There just isn't enough praise going on, right? So kids shouldn't have to earn anything anymore. They should just get a trophy. You know, I, I as I'm thinking this, and this is totally off the cuff, 100%. I wrote this title down a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know what it pertains to, and I'll get into that in future uh, episodes. Uh, but at the end of the day, we live in a world right now where people want to coddle our kids. They want them to feel good. It's all about the feelings. You know, I'm going to tell you something about feelings. This is real world, real talk parents out there. Look, I don't know jack about parenting, but the real world doesn't care how you feel. Like, I don't feel that's fair. Like, life isn't fair. Like, just straight up real talk, life is not fair. Um, There is no such thing. Thing is all inclusivity. I don't believe, uh, even though the title says different, that every kid should get a trophy. As a matter of fact, I think in this world, because the world will dictate this, what you earn is what you get. As a big football fan and one of my favorite coaches of all time, because he coached my team, the Dallas Cowboys, is Bill Parcells. And people used to say, you know, are, you're, you're a better team than your record shows. And he says, no, we are the team that our record shows. Like we're eight and eight. We, we play 500 football. We're not that good. Now, if we were 12 and 4, we'd be a 12 and 4 football team and our team would re- reflect that. But don't tell me on paper, like, hey, we're supposed to be a really good team, but yet our record reflects something else. Cause the proof is in the pudding. And that's just real life talk. There is no fair in life. Oh, we assembled the best team of talent, yet we can't win. Why we're not playing as a team? So when I say everybody gets a trophy, we live in a world in a society where kids don't have to earn anything because nobody wants them to feel badly. Nobody wants to see a kid shed tears and therefore, oh, oh, here, take this. Oh, take that. We don't want you to feel. But in actuality, when I think about this, there's a there's a great uh, poster out there about comfort zone and in the middle there's a circle and it says comfort and and you're in your comfort zone and you don't get out of it and you end up becoming complacent and you become uh and 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 look let me look i'm in front of my computer now i actually have it on my home page here inside it says 90 percent of the population stays in their comfort zone right and moms and dads alike want to keep their kids comforted in this zone and it says just like everyone they live a mediocre life they're just surviving they're getting by they're full of fear right because they don't know how to get out of their comfort zone and 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 be out there a lot of them are in depression a lot of them are settling for less than they are capable of doing they say statements like what if what if i fail and in their average zone or in, in that comfort zone, they tend to be average. And this is depicted in a circle. And outside of the circle, which would be outside of your comfort zone, we have things that say fearlessness, wealth, certainty, confidence, Dreams, excitement, lifestyle, security, financial freedom. The sky is the limit, prosperity, and life fulfillment. But when you leave people in their comfort zone, and that's okay. Look, 90% of the population lives there. We're wondering why, as parents, when we 
I'm going to use the word coddle and give everybody a trophy. Why they grow up with a lack of confidence. They stop dreaming. They are full of fear. They don't know how to get, they don't know how to go out and get a job. They have no self worth. They feel as though the sky is not the limit, like they are limited. They don't even know what financial freedom looks like. But they do know what depression looks like. They do know what pills look like. They do understand what it is to go to the doctor and the doctor prescribe them some type of medicine to handle their mental illness. They're struggling just to get to school, much less excel in school, because somewhere along the line, somebody handed them a trophy for doing nothing. Somewhere along the line, when they cried about something, they didn't get something they wanted, somebody handed it to them. And when you get a little bit older in life and you cry over some spilled milk, nobody's pouring you another glass. They're saying, clean it up. So my question is why, even at two years old, right? I have a two-year-old in the house and he throws things off of his tray when he's eating dinner or when he's eating lunch. And I'll take him down and I'll say, pick it up. And he'll pick it up and then put it in the garbage. And when you're ready to eat, let us know because we're not going to play and throw our food. And people would say, why would you do that to a two-year-old? That's what a two-year-old does. That's what a two-year-old does if you allow him to do it. If you allow her to do it. And that two-year-old turns into a three-year-old and a 13-year-old and a 23-year-old and a 33-year-old sleeping on your couch because you couldn't create a boundary as a parent. You kept them in their comfort zone like it's okay to throw shit. It's okay to cry and not get a, and, 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 and then just throw the kid a donut instead of saying, listen, you're not getting a donut because you don't deserve a donut. You didn't earn a donut. You didn't earn the trophy. And if you don't earn it, you don't get it. I'm going to tell you right now, my son is a first year baseball player. He says, dad, I don't like playing in the outfield. I want to play in the infield. I said, okay. So let's throw the ball when you get home. Well, I don't want to throw the ball. Well, then you don't want to be in the infield. What do you mean, Dad? I said the kids that are in the infield have been playing for years and they've practiced for years and they're, quite frankly, better than you. And in Little League, very few people hit the ball to the outfield. So when the coaches have gained your trust, they're going to move you to the infield because you can play. But right now, guess what? What, Dad? You're not that good. And in order to get better at something, what do you need to do, son? Dad, I need to practice, don't I? Yeah, just like everything else you've gotten good at. So don't tell me you want to be in the infield and in the same sentence, when I offer a way for you to get better, you tell me that you can't do it. I told him the truth. I'm getting him out of his comfort zone. Do you think it feels good for a young man to hear from his father that he's not that good at something? Do you think it's easy as a father for me to tell my son that he's not good at something? No, it's not because I know the truth hurts. But the truth and the reality of it is means that guess what? In order for you to grow, young man, you must get out of your comfort zone. In order for you to get the things you want, you must get out of your comfort zone. Because right now you're not very good at catching and you're not very good at throwing and you're on a baseball team. And those are the only two things they really need you to do. He actually happens to be pretty good at batting. And that's why he goes, Dad, I went from 10th in the lineup in batting all the way up to 6th. I said, do you know why that is? He goes, no. I said, because you're pretty good at batting. And the coaches recognized it. But if you want to go in the infield, we must learn to catch and throw a little bit better. See, not everybody gets a trophy. Not everybody 
should get to play in the infield. Not everybody should get to pitch. Not everybody should get to catch. As much as they want to do it, if they haven't earned the position, they shouldn't get to play there. Now, if they're all of equal ability and we want to switch them around to see it, I get it. But not when you are of less ability than 70% of your team. No, that kid who has practiced his butt off should not be in the outfield standing there twiddling his thumbs when there are plays to be made in the infield. Why? Because he has earned it. He has earned his trophy. And in this case, his trophy is the ability and the right to play in the infield. The ability and the right to be the pitcher. Nobody deserves a trophy in this world until they've earned it. We'll see you in the next episode. Do you want to be the dad you wish you had? If so, go get my free book, Be the Dad You Wish You Had, at be the dad you wish you had com. Inside, you'll find my most effective 40 tips to quickly and easily transform yourself into the ideal dad. Go to be the dad you wish you had.com now and get it while it's free.